you're going to start with the crankcase, the challenge is going to be placing that camshaft bore exactly perpendicular to the front and rear face, as well as parallel to the top, bottom, left, and right sides. Drilling a perfectly perpendicular hole is very difficult, so what we're going to do instead is drill the hole first and bring all of the sides parallel and perpendicular to it. We use the face mill to create a flat rear side so we can clamp the workpiece solidly against the jaws in the lathe. The workpiece is a tenth of an inch oversized in all directions, so the center point for our hole doesn't have to be perfectly placed. We load the workpiece into the four jaw chuck, offsetting it to bring the camshaft hole in alignment with the axis of the lathe. We drill progressively larger holes within a sixteenth of an inch of final size. Drill bits have a tendency to wander. So we'll use a boring bar to bring the camshaft bore to the proper size and ensure it is in line with the lathe center. Notice the yellow tape I have placed on the ways to let me know where to stop the carriage so I don't inadvertently crash it into the workpiece. We make repeated skim cuts a half an inch from both ends, as this is really the only section of the bore that needs to have the proper internal dimension. Telescoping gauge assists in measuring the internal diameter and lets us know we're at final dimension. Then we face off the part, and this produces a perpendicular front surface to the camshaft bore. In hindsight, I would have faced the workpiece first, as the interrupted cuts of the facing operation have the potential potential to knock the workpiece out of position. We go to the surface plate and precisely measure where the camshaft hole is with respect to the remaining sides. The camshaft bore is perpendicular to the front face, so now it's a simple matter of squaring the block as we have done before. I decided to face the top of the crankcase in the lathe, as my face mill is not large enough to perform this operation in one pass, and leaves a groove down the middle. I don't want this on top of my crankcase, but I do use the face mill for the smaller sides. Notice here the first cut of the face mill shows that the camshaft bore is not parallel to the sides. Of course it will be after we square up the workpiece. Now it's time to go back to the surface plate, just a sheet of glass in my shop, and use the dial height gauge in conjunction with gauge blocks and the micrometer to accurately measure the crankcase. I make a drawing of actual dimensions in preparation for the machining of the crankcase bottom. The critical feature for this next operation is the boring of the crankshaft. We need to ensure the distance from the camshaft bore to the crankshaft bore is correct for the timing gears to mesh correct, I allow for a 10,000th gasket between the crankcase and the sump. Then the distance between the camshaft and the crankshaft drives the distance of the crankshaft bore from this edge. So this is the number here I'm going to be shooting for when I machine the slot that will be used to place the crankshaft bore. We've established the front and the left side of our crankcase as the datum. We touch off of these and then use a ball-in mill to machine a groove down the middle that a quarter-inch drill rod will be sandwiched between the crankcase and sump to use as a reference later when we bore the crankshaft. So in the same setup, we spot drill, drill, and tap as necessary. This is now routine and requires no further explanation, right? So that brings our crankcase to what I call completion of phase one. We now need to bring the sump to the same phase one machining state. Then we will bolt the two together and machine the crankshaft bore. So now we've squared up the block for our sump. Drill the same holes to match these on the crankcase. This will sit right up like this. So there's the sump with the machining completed on the top. We need to remove some material from the sides of the sump to give us access to the through holes so we can secure the sump to the crankcase. At this juncture, we need to make a decision because the machining is different with manual machine sump than it is for the CNC machine sump. The two sumps are functionally identical. It's just that the one on the left is easier to manual machine. 
Here I'm removing the material on the side of the sump for CNC machining. The CNC router then reveals the holes for our 632 screws. So next time, we're going to take this faceplate, mount this onto here somehow, put this in the lathe, and bore our crank shaft hole. So until next time, I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my workshop. Take care.